uh, hi everyone can you hear me I yeah, can hear you. Same, Anthony. Can hear you. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Since uh, you know we have at least half of the crowd, we can go ahead and start it because it's getting recorded. Uh, so we'll share a link later, guys, so that you know they can watch it. Right? That should be great. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, good evening again. Welcome everybody. Uh, this meeting is about Ask Me Anything session with respect to the trek which is going to happen on 30th of July. We have Navin Malesh here. Who's going to you know give an intro for the, the complete uh, download of what is going to happen with respect to the trek? I mean, please take over. Thanks, Simon. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Good evening. So I would request everyone to be on mute and you know uh, until we uh, close the session, so that you know it is easier for everyone to hear uh, what I would. Shared me. So here is the thing. So we we do this uh, trek briefing session to basically give you a virtual tour of the entire trek, uh, just to give you an understanding what happens from a daily basis, right from morning till evening, and how you travel across each and every day, and what you would be able to experience during the trek. That will be the first part, and the second part would be basically on you know what are the things to carry and what, which are the important and the very most important things. That for sure you need to carry compulsorily, and how you need to pack, and what is the fitness and mindset you would require, and uh, other benefits that you get in this trek. You know, for example, insurance and other goodies and everything. So this is how the format would be uh, for this session. So I'll quickly get into a brief and very detailed understanding of what we say as a virtual tour of this trek. So as you all understand, you will be arriving on uh, Saturday, and this particular day is just. Considered as an assembling day because most of you uh, would be traveling from different parts and at different timings as well as per your flight timing. So we'll all assemble at Rishikesh. Uh, the hotel details at Rishikesh would be shared in the group uh, by our team probably two to three days uh, before your departure. So you'll have all the details related to the hotel location, contact details, and everything. Your rooms will be booked over there. So you can come and check in by around uh, 11 or 12 o'clock at the hotel at your convenience. And that day it will just be le at leisure for you. So probably few people might come in early and few people might come in late in the evening. However, it is just an assembling day and the meet and greet kind of a day for you. So for people who come in early, so we have certain things that you can do uh, are in and around this place. So you would be staying in Tapovan, Rishikesh. So nearby, you know, you have uh, in walkable distance you will have uh, Lakshman Jula. And if you take a, a local rickshaw. Uh, Tuk -tuk, you know, it will take another 15 minutes to reach Ramjula and uh, we would uh, suggest you to for sure uh, you visit Triveni Sangam for the uh, famous Ganga Arati. So this happens around 5.30 or 5.45 in the evening. So for sure you can go and uh, visit there. It is one of uh, the very famous Ganga Arati that happens in this part and many people actually plan just to witness this. So as you are there, in the evening, you know, even for people who are landing, uh, who are taking the direct flight from Bangalore, who are landing around uh, 4 o'clock or 3.30 or 4 o'clock, what you can do is, you know, uh, if you have time, you can directly uh, go there uh, for the Ganga Arati and then come into room and check in. Or else, if you can manage, you can just drop in your luggage at the hotel and then go there. But just make sure, you know, you uh, at least have, a, have time to, you know, at least witness it. So that would be the day for you and uh, you'll have dinner at the hotel uh, on your own and you'll sleep for the night. Next day, early morning, uh, by around 5.30, 6 o'clock, uh, you should be ready with, uh, you should check out your rooms and you should be ready at the reception. Vehicle will come at the hotel itself to pick you up, where you will travel from Rishikesh to Ali. So we start early, uh, making sure that, you know, whatever contingencies that might occur during the route, whether it is traffic, whether it is uh, downpour, rain, or ultimately landslides. So wh what we do is, you know, we start early so that if there are any kind of contingencies that occur during the route, we can avoid it, avoid it in the sense uh, we can, we will have that buffer time so that we reach Ali uh, probably around seven or eight o'clock in the night, even if we are stuck for two to, two to three hours in the route. So this is how we plan and you will be getting a packed breakfast out from the hotel. So you can pick it up and you know just board the vehicle. So now this day, when you travel from Rishikesh to Ali, you would be able to see four of the famous punch prayers. 
so the punch prayag is a river river confluences uh, which are like you know very famous in this route and also has lot of mythological stories for example you know right from rishikesh you know if you cross off for around 1 1 1/2 hour you will be able to see dev prayag which is a confluence of bagirathi and alakanda river and that is where the river ganga starts so that famous is that dev prayag so you will be able to see that uh, after dev prayag you, you will be crossing rudra prayag however rudra prayag you will not be able to see the confluence because you will be in the other side of it you will be able to see it while you are coming back to rishikesh from joshimat on the eighth day so after that you know you will be seeing karna prayag which is a, a confluence of pindari and alaknanda and most probably you will be having lunch somewhere around karna prayag at a restaurant where you will have this view of this prayag so most probably no matter uh, whatever traffic or anything is there uh, you will be having lunch around the karna prayag so after that is your nand prayag which is the confluence of uh, nandakini and alaknanda so that is your uh, fourth prayag and after that you will reach joshimat from joshimat it is again 16 km uh, guard section to ali so that is where you will reach and that is where you are going to stay for that night so there you will meet our uh, uh, local trek guide support in, support staff and everyone and uh, again you are the room should be booked uh, in a resort over there and uh, you will stay that night over there you will have dinner and you will meet the team as well over there and uh, you will have dinner and you will rest for that night so that would be your second day and third day uh, again you will start early in the morning you will have breakfast you will quickly grab into your uh, small backpack so what goes into your backpack and how your backpack should be i'll cover it in the next section so you will be again given a, a packed lunch you will be carrying that and now you will go towards a gorsan bugyal for an acclimatization trek so what happens here is in this entire uh, point of what we say is acclimatization so for any high altitude that you go uh, you need to get adjusted to the altitude cold temperature and the low oxygen availability in the air so acclimatization becomes very very important when you venture out into high altitudes especially beyond 3000 meter or 10000 feet so right now in ali you will be around 2600 meters and for gorsan bugyal you will be going around somewhere around 3000 100 3200 meters so you will be having a very good a fan to 600 meters kind of a altitude gain and also all your uh, leg muscles uh, and, and your joints everything gets warmed up here so and more and you know, more to say about this ali as you know it is a ski destination of india so it will be very very beautiful at this point of time all the snow would have melted and the entire meadows uh, would be like you know really green and lot of flowers would have bloomed in this uh, particular meadows as well so you will be able to witness lot of flowers here as well and one more beautiful thing about all is you get a panoramic view of all the 6000 and 7000 meter white peaks uh few to name like you know hathi parvat goda parvat dronagiri which is a famous and revered mountain sanjeevni parvat which hanuman took and if you are lucky and uh, if the cr- clouds are clear you will be able to see the highest peak of india as well which is nanda devi uh, that can also be seen from this particular point if you are not at ali there is no point that you will be able to see nanda devi at any route you know uh, in this trek particularly so this is what you will do so probably around 4 to 5 hours you know you can uh, do this trek leisurely uh, gradual ascent no difficult thing only that you know uh, as i told ali is a ski destination there is a ski slope that is there at the beginning of the trek so that's the only inclined gradient you know that you might find difficult apart from that it is a gradual ascent in the tropical forest and then opens up into a beautiful uh, uh, landscape of you know meadow big meadow so you will be able to easily do that so you will also get an understanding you know how your body is coping up and everything so you will come back uh, probably by an around early evening again you will have leisure at the whole resort you can relax there go in and around there are like few temples over there so you can go in and around relax for the day and then by evening before dinner you will bifurcate your luggage into porter luggage and your backpack so our team will let, let you know like you know uh, how you need to bifurcate it and everything and uh, you will have dinner and rest for the night so the next day again the vehicle will come to the resort pick you up uh, post breakfast so you will check out from the resort over there and then move towards uh, govindgarh so from ali to govindgarh it might take around uh, one one and a half hour kind of a travel so you will reach govindgarh there will be a small uh, formality of uh, doing the registration and everything for him kun sahib so 
so our team will take care of that by the time you all your luggage will move from uh, the bus to another uh, vehicle from goind ghat to phoolna which is around 2 kilometers again there is a possibility of taking a vehicle so we cut down that not to stretch that so we take that four wheel drive vehicle so post post the formalities you will move into the four wheel vehicle and then you go towards phoolna so from there your luggage would be going on the mules and ponies and you will start trekking from there so from phoolna to gangaria it is probably around 12 to 14 kilometers and even at the leisure pace and the very comfortable pace you should be able to do it around 6 to 7 hours with all water breaks uh, washroom breaks and your lunch break and even if you are pretty slow or you know if it starts raining in between as well so probably around 8 hours you know you should be able to easily complete it now the terrain from phoolna to uh, gangaria would be like you know proper paved uh, rocky path so it will be a paved path made of rocks uh, it is a a uh, proper pilgrimage route towards uh, himkund sahib you will find lot of uh, 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 people who are going towards uh, himkund sahib and at any point of time uh, during this route you know if you are not able to uh, walk or you know in, in case you know you would want some kind of assistance this route has a possibility of even taking a pony at any point of time and even before that you know a few people actually opt for taking the helicopter as well uh, from govind ghat to gangaria so if required any which case so there is a possibility so trek is you uh, are taking a pony or taking a basket or a dolly or helicopter so there are like multiple possibilities to reach gangaria so this particular day you you might reach around the 4 or 5 o'clock at gangaria again all your luggage would have reached the hotel and the hotel will be booked there so you can uh, check in you know relax for some time freshen up and then by evening you know again you will be briefed about the next day's activities and then you will have dinner and rest for the day the next day from gangaria we will be going towards hemkund sahib so our day will start pretty early compared to uh, the other two days uh, why because you know this is the uh, toughest day i would say in this entire itinerary because from 3000 meter we will be going to around 4500 4600 meter and this is a straight inclined path all the entire route which is around 7 kilometers from gangaria to himkund sahib it is an entirely inclined terrain gradual inclined terrain but purely inclined so it is again a proper rocky paved path so you would have to start early having breakfast again carrying the packed lunch so you will start early and uh, probably you know if there are the glaciers which is not melted uh, you may you will be able to see so for the timing that you are going you might not find it in the route but you will from a little bit of far uh, distance you know you will be able to see some glaciers as well in this route and you will again reach uh, uh, hemkund sahib by around uh, 12 or 1 o'clock comparatively usually it takes around 4 4 and a half hours uh, for the one one route one side trek so once you reach there having darshan and you know few people who would want to take a dip in the pond uh, which is a holy pond over there so all these things can be done and once you are done you know you will be able to enjoy a very hot uh, and very tasty meal over there which is like khichdi and you know they will also provide you hot tea over there at 4600 meter and at a very cold temperature i think that it is itself is an experience so you can enjoy that you will also have a packed lunch you know that we would have provided so that will be utilized during the route or you know while you come back you know that can also be done so again coming down it will not take much time so it will be totally descending route uh, just you need to take care of your knees and you know uh, your ankles so use your sticks and everything as required and our team will also help you on the ground like you know if there is any issues and everything so coming down you will be taking around 2 to 1 and a half hours even if you are walking slow it will be like around 3 hours so probably again around 4 or 5 pm max you know you should be back to resort uh, to the hotel at gangaria so again same routine you know you will freshen up and you know, relax for some time have an early dinner and you know you'll sleep and uh, next day again wake up you know slightly at a leisure because you know the distance to valley of flowers is not that much so you can slightly wake up at leisure uh, have breakfast again pack your bags pick up your uh, packed lunch and then move towards uh, valley of flowers so it's kind of a same route but you know there is a diversion just after 100 meters so again there is some format is they will just check your id cards and everything so you have taken permits and you know they will just match the id cards and everything and 
then you will go towards the valley of floods this route is a proper uh, trail route so it's a forest trail route only few sections they have made a rocky paved path because of landslides but apart from that you know it is a kind of uh, uh, forest trail route you will go through a lot of uh, forest routes and you, know, you will cross the uh, bridges and uh, the famous pushpavati river would also be uh, witnessed in you know, in this entire route so this particular route might take around 2 and 1/2 to 3 hours max uh, for you to reach and uh, uh, you will reach there probably around uh, 11 or 12 o'clock so once that is done once you reach over there so there is a possibility of exploring the deeper parts of the valley so you can go uh, up to like you know 1 or 2 kilometers into the valley or uh, there is uh, another uh, place you know which is like you know legis grave Uh, a very famous botanist you know who found out who found most of the flowers in this entire valley so she laid her life you know entire life there so as a dedication you know they put a, a grave over there so that is also a place that you can visit so uh, see the thing here yeah, at valley of flowers is we have a time limit over there so probably around 1 or 1:30 we should uh, start coming back from there the reason is you know this as i told you this is an entirely forest trail and it gets really dark over there once the uh, the day moves towards the sunset so it is always good that we come back before the uh, daylight is there so before sunset so what we do is you know probably around 1:30 or 2 max you know we start coming back from uh, uh, wherever we are so again it will take around 2 to 1 and a half hours for us to reach so probably around uh, uh, maximum 4 or 4:30 we should be able to reach but usually uh, whenever we visit the valley of flood uh, as it is a shorter distance and uh, as your body would have acclimatized uh, because of your hinfund type climb so you would be very comfortable and you would your body would be reacting really well so you wouldn't have got tired and you know so usually what you observe is we come back by around 3 3:30 type so you will have almost uh, kind of 3 to 4 hours in that day uh, at leisure so that point of time you can explore in and around gangaria go to some eateries and you know, uh, do some shopping and there is also a, a documentary that runs uh, nearby about uh, the history of valley of flats you can go and visit that as well so it is a 20 minute documentary so you can do that as well so again that night you know you have dinner and you rest and the next day you will start the day very early because we will be going down to govindgarh so very early have breakfast and you know, take back lunch and then we move towards uh, govindgarh so reaching goen ghat will take around uh, uh, probably around 4 hours so usually our timing is that you know we should reach goen ghat by 12 o'clock so same routine so we reach pulna uh, we take a four wheel drive from there to goen ghat and from goen ghat our vehicle would be waiting for you so now here what happens is if you reach by 12 1230 we have an option to go towards badrinath uh, provided uh, the weather is good and the roads are open uh, without any landslides so if the weather is good and no landslides are there so it is we'll be able to go towards badrinath and we will have darshan over there and uh, then we will go to uh, mana mana is the last village of india and also uh, it is the place you know where mahabharata was written vyas gupta and ganesh gupta and all of there and also the famous uh, swarganavali route where the pandavas took route to heaven so this was the place so there are a lot of mythological stories associated to this uh, place so you will be able to go there explore and you know know about all these things uh, so from there we come back to joshimath so from uh, govindgarh to badrinath it should take around 1 hour so from badrinath to joshimath probably around 1 and a half hour to 2 hours max so we'll reach around uh, 7 o'clock uh, to joshimath again you will freshen up relax for the day have dinner and sleep now the thing is if there is any issues with the weather and if the la- roads are closed by landslide uh, we will have to drop this particular route of going towards badrinath and uh, mana and then we have to move directly to joshimath this particular call would be taken by our team and their decision would be like you know basis only with concern to your safety so what happens is you know even if the road is open and if the weather is bad if you go towards badrinath in case the weather gets even worse vehicles will not be allowed to come in the route because considering the uh, situation of landslides when it rains more the landslides would be more so that's why they don't allow the vehicles at all so if we go towards that place and we get stopped uh, the rest of the itinerary would be like difficult for us especially to reach rishikesh it might get really late so 
what we do is you know concerning uh, the weather and you know uh, checking with the local people our team will take a decision uh, and then uh, take a call accordingly so bazinath it will be entirely dependent on weather and landscape so next day you come to uh, uh you come to joshimat you stay that night and next day you will have uh, breakfast and the vehicle would be uh, at the hotel to pick you up you will pack all your bags and then move towards rishikesh so it is the same route that you have uh, traveled but uh, on the way uh, uh you will be able to see rudraprayag so rudraprayag is a confluence of uh, mandakini and uh, alaknanda mandakini comes from uh, kedarnath and that is a very famous uh, confluence so the fifth confluence that i missed so that you that you will be able to see when you go towards uh, badrinath that is the uh, confluence vishnu prayag that is a, a confluence of uh, dhauli ganga and alaknanda so that you will be able to see only if you take the route towards badrinath else you will not be able to see so these are the five prayags that you will be able to cover in this route as well so if the traffic is not much and you know, if there are no landslides you will be able to reach uh, rishikesh by around 5 or 6 pm if there are traffic you know you will reach kind of late night around 7 or 8 pm so again the same hotel your uh, rooms would be booked you can crash for the night uh, you can rest and next day after breakfast you can uh, check out at your leisure and uh, as per your flight schedule and uh, you will be on your own to your home city from there so this is how typically your uh, entire 9 days would look more or less you know 90% it would be the same but if there are any kind of uh, contingencies as i told you traffic weather landslide anything that happens so the slight changes would be there uh, just to give you uh, an understanding you know one of our groups you know like 3 4 years ago just before the valley of floods like there was a huge landslide in the route of valley of floods so we couldn't go at all so that couldn't happen the valley of floods like couldn't happen at all rest all happened but you know we couldn't get into the valley at all so again it is like you know entirely in the nature and you now in that control so there are certain things you know which we are not in control of so that happens and there are times you know where uh, we have seen uh, uh, big landslides in the route which has you know uh, which took us almost 3 to 4 hours where we were standing in the route and it is just there so that's the thing so all these things happens but yeah that's the thing so this is about diet and so if you have any questions then you can go ahead uh guys one moment the meeting is going to end i request everybody to please rejoin this post the you know the three minutes are over again the meeting is going to end right now I request everybody to rejoin on the same link